This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we begin with Book 2, Unlearning the World. In Chapter 1, this is Section 1, Healing and Atonement are Identical. Part 1 David There is absolutely, positively nothing in time, matter or space that is causative at all. Out of everything that seems to come out of the mouth, you need to just watch for content. For example, just now when you were talking about the dog, you expressed the idea that if you lock the dog up, she will feel deprived. And then, when you let her out, she will be excited. Cause and effect. Just about anything you can think of is based on causation in the world. To accept the atonement and hold to the fact that my mind is causative and there is absolutely nothing on the screen in the entire cosmos that has any kind of causation whatsoever is healing. That is what this lesson in the Manual for Teachers is about. Healing and atonement are not related. They are identical. There is no order of difficulty in miracles because there are no degrees of atonement. It is the one complete concept possible in this world because it is the source of a wholly unified perception. Partial atonement is a meaningless idea, just as special areas of hell in heaven are inconceivable. Accept atonement and you are healed. Atonement is the word of God. Accept his word and every miracle has been accomplished. To forgive is to heal. The teacher of God has taken accepting the atonement for himself as his only function. What is there, then he cannot heal. What miracle can be withheld from him? Manual for Teachers, Part 22 The next paragraph touches on the self-concept and transfer of training. What will I hold back from the atonement? The progress of the teacher of God may be slow or rapid depending on whether he recognizes the atonement's inclusiveness or, for a time, excludes some problem areas from it. In some cases, there is a sudden and complete awareness of the perfect applicability of the lesson of the atonement to all situations. But this is comparatively rare. The teacher of God may have accepted the function God has given him long before he has learned all that his acceptance holds out to him. Manual for Teachers, Section 22 Friend, if I knew what was in store for me, David, laughing, Mother Teresa said something like, if I had known when I was young what was coming, I would never have stepped into this. She was being slightly facetious. It is only the end that is certain. Anywhere along the way, the necessary realization of inclusiveness may reach him. If the way seems long, let him be content. He has decided on the direction he wants to take. 
what more was asked of him? In having done what was required, would God withhold the rest? Manual for Teachers, Section 22 I think of that line, If the way seems long, let him be content. You get a sense of how quickly you want to climb the seeming ladder. You cannot really go to the next rung until you get a really good push off from the prior one. Desire and willingness are the only things that determine whether it is going to be a long ladder or... Friend, that feels reassuring to me. Be content where you are. Do not worry about whether or not it seems to be taking a long time. David Do not get into judging based on increments in this world or comparisons. Friend Just be content and stay on the path. David that forgiveness is healing needs to be understood if the teacher of God is to make progress. Manual for Teachers, Section 22 Forgiveness is the reversal of the thoughts in the mind. All the backwards ones have been having been turned around. The idea that a body can be sick is the central concept in the ego's thought system. Manual for Teachers, Section 22 That is an underlying assumption. Whenever things are brought up, like the issue with your toe or flu symptoms, the underlying assumption in the presenting problem is that you have a sick body. I feel it. Or I have been through this. The idea that a body can be sick is the central concept in the ego's thought system. As we see in this paragraph, it is very important for the ego to hold on to the idea that a body can be sick. That is one of the strongest witnesses to separation. It's ace in the whole friend. And the more you think of it, the more power you give it. David. Focusing on pain gives the body autonomy, separates it from the mind, and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. Manual for Teachers, Section 22. Friend. And if the body has power over the mind to keep me distracted from the truth? As if. David. Underneath that is the thought, I cannot change my mind. That is what I hear when people say, Friend, I am in pain. David. Yes. I also hear, I tried. I asked the Holy Spirit to see things differently. I want to not be in pain. I cannot do it. It has power over me. There is a feeling of frustration and powerlessness. The mind has chosen it and then forgotten exactly what it chose in order for it to seem that the body has power. As we get into this deeper, you begin to see the mind's desire to hold on to the concept of itself as it perceives itself. It wants to hold on dearly to the separation, to the small self. It is invested in holding on to that. It is so terrified of letting that go and just going into the light that it seems like sickness is a great device that has value. It clearly provides a witness. Friend, it gets your attention. David, it draws the attention off the mind and back out there onto the body and the screen. 
friend. Instead of watching what I am thinking now, all I think about is the pain in my toe or elbow. David. And as we go deeper into the metaphysics, the next thought is like our friend's comment. I want to understand this thing. I made myself sick. Now the mind has taken responsibility for the attack thoughts and for what it perceives as sickness. That is where the guilt comes in. The guilt is coming in from lining up with the wrong mind. From raising body thoughts to the level of mind. In other words, saying I am responsible for behavior, for things that the body seems to do, and has done, and so on and so forth. If that is true, then sins are only in bodies. But the mind has associated itself with the body, and that is where the guilt comes in. Friend, is that level confusion? David, yes, it is about level confusion. Body thoughts are of the ego and not of the right mind. But saying that body thoughts are causative is really what to raise body thoughts to the level of mind means. It's simply to say that the body or something in matter is causative or creative. And you can see that is where the level confusion occurs. In the belief that bodies actually act. It seems in this world as if there are autonomous persons that act autonomously. It seems like in the deceived state that we each have different minds. One can decide to come or to stay. Each of us can decide to do this or do that. It really seems that way. There is a pretty well accepted belief that we are all persons. And part of being a person is to have a mind of your own. The deceived mind has assigned to the mind the properties of the body. The metaphor here is that we have these separate bodies sitting on the couch and that each of these minds is also separate. Really there is just one mind and all the characters on the screen, all of them, are part of the playing out of a script that is already played out. It has all been played out. In other words, when I say that the mind wrote the script, it hired the characters, it gave out the parts, and everything that is said is its own invention. This one sleeping mind has invented and projected out all these other bodies and all these other minds and has given out all these parts. It has done the whole thing. There is absolutely nothing to be upset about when somebody says or does something. When another dream figure or the dog seems to do something and you feel upset, that is part of the script. It is believed to be apart from my mind though. If I am a person and that is a dog, it is not a child but just a dog. And I am upset at the dog's behavior or whatever. I have simply denied that that is just a thought or an image in my own mind. I mean, if it is just another image, what is the big deal? You see, when the meaning gets written into it, I am a person, this is my house, we have guests coming over, this is just a dog. The dog should not inhibit our social life. 
The dog should not be doing this. You can see where all this stuff gets read into as meaning. And then, by golly, before you know it, you are upset at something that the dog has done. Or, you can look at it from the perspective that bodies are autonomous. They do not act apart from your mind. They are thoughts in a concretized form, acting out. Friend, so I am not responsible for the roles that I assign, for what is said or done by the characters, but I am responsible for how I perceive that? David, yes. Friend, I am responsible for my reaction. That is all it is really. Everything is how you feel. Everything. It is like when I walk along and I think that I will see somebody to talk to. I know there will be somebody there. And sure enough, there she is. David. The only thing you want to do is always keep it in past tense. Because the miracle sees it as having already happened. I put someone there to talk to. I will put has a linear sense to it. We are getting back to this causation thing. For example, it really seems that at times when I think I would like water, a pool shows up. There is a lot of talk about concepts like abundance, about using your mind to attract things to you. But the script is written. The only thing we really have a choice about is seeing it through the miracle, from above the battlefield, seeing that none of the images are true and none of it is me. That is where the peace comes from. It only seems as if symbols are being brought forth, as if people are using their minds to get cars and stuff, then they make the association that the mind is powerful and creative, but it is linked in with the form again. They do not have the clarity of the levels that the Course brings. The right mind sees it all as false. The right mind is not full of images. It is above the images and looks on all of them as equally false. The teaching is very clear on causation and that all of these are unreal effects. If they are unreal effects, then their cause is unreal. The Holy Spirit looks to the cause and knows that the cause of these effects is unreal. He has judged their cause and overlooked it. He does not look to the projections on the screen. He has judged their cause and knows that it is unreal and therefore knows that everything in the wrong mind is false. In that sense then, defenselessness makes perfect sense. There would never be a reason to have any kind of care, worry or concern. Can you imagine what it means to have no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but merely to be profoundly, perfectly calm and quiet all the time? Yet, that is what time is for. To learn just that, and nothing more. Text chapter 15, section 1 That is it. That is the lesson. And it is not something you strive for either. Friend, yes, this quote really spoke to me. You would not react at all to figures in a dream you knew that you were dreaming. Text chapter 27, section 8 David Yes, 
Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. They watch the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die. Yet they are not deceived by what they see. They recognize that to behold a dream figure as sick and separate is no more real than to regard it as healthy and beautiful. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams, and it is this God's teachers acknowledge as being the dream, behind the dream, beyond all seeming, and yet surely theirs. Manual for Teachers, Section 12 We will continue with Part 2 of Section 1 from Chapter 1 of Book 2 tomorrow.